I actually don't necessarily anticipate that the Fed will cut rates, but I do think they should cut rates. Um, and I think the reason for that is that uh, whereas my, bench, my baseline outlook is, is quite positive, uh, I think we'll see growth in, in uh, 2019, albeit slow growth. But the downside risks are out there. And when you're so close to, to uh, the effect of lower bound, um, you, you really want to keep that economy as healthy as possible. And you don't have that many, many medicines to treat the patient when it gets sick. You want to keep the patient as, as, sick, as well as they, the, he or she can possibly be. And that means, uh, I think right now, would mean an interest rate cut. So, so would that, you're calling for a cut. Is that because it would be wise to have a preemptive cut? Or is the data already bad enough that the medicine is needed? It's a more, I think, a preemptive risk management kind of position. It's not that the data looks bad to me. I think my view on the data is very similar to the uh, baseline outlook that's out there among many forecasters. It's more that monetary policy is really about risk management. And especially when you're as close to the zero or brown as you are, you, you want to take out that, I think, uh, uh, have, that, have that preemptive cut in order to keep the economy as healthy and as strong as you possibly can. But for so many years, as you know, and the Fed has been trying to exit the super easy, extraordinary policy of zero interest rates and this massive trillion, multi-trillion dollar bloated balance sheet. And, and we're finally sort of getting to do that. And, and now the, the pause is going to set the Fed back. Why cut when we're not in, in going into recession or in a recession or anything like that? Why not save the ammunition? Oh, I, I, I think the real uh, answer to that question lies in that the policies are only should be judged through one uh, lens, and that is in terms of have they led to unduly high inflation. That's the only lens through which we should be judging whether policy has been too easy or not. And the answer is no. I mean, inflation has been running too low for, uh, I, you know, there's a little bit above, we got above 2% maybe in 2011. But by and large, since the end of the recession, inflation's been running too low. And so actually, I think the Fed has been overly hawkish throughout this time frame. I view myself, and I, you know, I'm regarded as one of the most dovish uh, commentators on monetary policy out there. I've been too hawkish for the last seven years. It's because the economy um, has continued to underperform relative to expectations. And as long as inflation remains below 2%, you can and should be uh, providing more accommodation. What, what could change your view on, on that? If we got a resolution uh, on the China trade dispute, for example, could that make you incrementally more bullish such that this cut that you uh, want to see would not be needed? I, for me, the key marker is inflation. It's, it's um, you know, and, and uh, I, I noticed that markets are predicting that there's no, <laughs> essentially no chance of the Fed uh, raising rates this year, uh, that I, I would don't agree with. I think that there is, a, there is a chance that we would start to see inflationary pressures build in such a way that it would become appropriate to, to raise rates. Um, that's not my baseline outlook, and I, that's not the risk I worry about. Uh, but that's what, you, that's what would make you as a monetary policymaker, if you start to come into the end of 2019, uh, sustained movement in core inflation above 2%, yeah, then you should, you should be raising rates.